Okay, uh, good afternoon, Ms. Jowney. This will be my video lecture in legal aspects in tourism and hospitality industry, the hospitality and tourism industry. Today is November 8, 2021. It's a Monday, no? And so we will be continuing our discussion on the important provisions, no? Important provisions of law relating to obligations and so this will be our topic for today obligations and contracts no the provisions of law that will govern anything about obligations and contracts can be found in the new civil code no this is the law new civil code no civil code uh, everything about obligations, everything about contracts will have something to do with the provisions, provisions, no meaning legal provisions. Legal provisions can be found in the new civil code. No. So why do we have to study obligations? No, why do we have to study obligations? Why do we have to study contracts? Well, basically. When you go in the field, once you, you will practice your profession in the tourism diba? or hospitality industry, no? because this is where your discipline is, definitely when you are a tourism professional or a hospitality professional, you will be entering into contracts. No? And when we talk of contracts, of course it presupposes that there are obligations to comply no you will not also enter into a contract without uh, meeting the obligations specified in the contract itself now before i proceed with my lecture on obligations and contracts last time we studied about the different forms of what legal organization or business organization i told you about sole proprietorship i told you about partnership i told you about corporations and this uh business organizations these business organizations that i talked about last time will also have the uh what's this the obligation to comply with the stipulations we call that stipulations Stipulations are those terms and conditions that the parties, the contract, the contracting parties have entered into. They have to comply the stipulations stated in the contract. Now, in short, when you become a tourism professional, when you become a hospitality professional, there will always be a time for you to enter into contracts. No? Back contracts. There will always be a time for you to comply with the obligations stated in the contract itself. Now, before I proceed, uh, just a uh, the start would be I have to tell you that when we talk of contracts. <coughs> We also talk about the creditor. No? These are the contracting parties. And if there is a creditor, of course, what is the other party called? It's the debtor. No? So the debtor. The creditor, the other term for the creditor is what we call the obligee. Well, this is just an introduction. The other term for debtor is the obligor. Okay, we will be discussing this thoroughly later on. No? <clears throat> so just remember, the creditor is the obligee, the debtor is the obligor. Now, these are what we call the contracting, contracting parties. Remember these terms, Miss Jody, no? Because uh, I cannot proceed with a discussion of contracts or the discussion of obligations unless you know this very basic terms no 
And you may ask, who is the creditor? Of course, the creditor is the one who owes something no? to the other person who is called the debtor. Diba? The creditor, I repeat, the creditor is the one who owes something to the other party. To the other party. And that other party is the, of course, the, uh, I know, the, it's this. It's not the creditor, but it is the debtor. The debtor is the one who owes something to the other party, and the other party is the creditor. Clear? I repeat, it is the debtor who owes something to the other party, and that other party is, of course, the creditor. Okay. okay, let us proceed now with the discussion of obligations. Now you may ask, what is an obligation? Okay, I'm running out of ink again. An obligation is a juridical necessity, not juridical necessity. Juridical necessity to what? Juridical necessity to comply with the obligations of what are those? To give. <clears throat> Juridical necessity to give, to do, or not to do. No? So these are what we call prestations. Prestations. What is a prestation? That is the object of the obligation. No? Remember this, an obligation is a juridical necessity to give, to do, or not to do. These are the three kinds of obligations. To give, to do, or not to do. And we call this as prestations. Not presentation, but prestation. Okay? Clear, Mr. Johnny? Now, this presupposes when we talk of a juridical necessity, there is a tie. No? Juridical meaning, you bound yourself to somebody or to someone to comply with a certain obligation or a certain duty. And that obligation may consist in any of this prestation. Clear? But anyway, you just review, I will be giving you a video lecture that is more at length in the discussion of obligations and contracts. Now, uh, there are three, uh, oh, what's it, uh, the elements, rather, no? We have the elements, <clears throat> the elements of obligations. No, there are four elements of obligations. The first is what we call the active subject. No, the active subject. These are the four elements of obligations. The active subject, of course, if we have the active subject, we also have what we call the passive subject. Right? Then, of course, we have the prestation or object. Prestation or object, the same thing, object of the obligation. And then, fourth, we have what we call the efficient cost. Efficient cost. So, remember this. These are the elements of obligations. No? When we talk of the active subject, it is the person who could demand the performance of the prestation or of the obligation. And who is that? Is it the debtor or the creditor? Who is the active subject? Is tell me. If that person has the right to demand the performance of the obligation or the prestation, he must be the, sino siya? The creditor or the debtor? He is the creditor. And of course, the passive subject who will be performing that obligation will be the 
the order. Okay? Clear? Now, <clears throat> now next would be the presentation or object. We go back to the discussion again. The presentation or the object, of course, I told you there are three, no? The presentation to give, to give what? To give something, a thing or a movable or removable object, no? To give, to do, meaning to render service and see not to do, to refrain from doing something. So these are the three prestations or objects of an obligation. Okay, the fourth element is what we call the efficient cost. Diba? I've written it down, efficient cost. Well, the efficient cost is the reason, you know, the reason why there is that obligation. And what's the reason? Usually, this is the juridical tie. It is the juridical tie or the otherwise known as the venculum. You know? The venculum is the tie you know? between the parties, the contracting parties who constituted the obligation. So, remember that there is an efficient cost. The efficient cost is the juridical tie or the vinculum. Usually, the efficient cost would be in the form of a contract. No? Clear? So far? <clears throat> now, here, we talk about the debt creditor. We talk about the debtor. Now, I repeat. Who has the right to demand the fulfillment or the performance of the obligation again? It is the creditor. So, the person who has the right to demand is, of course, the active subject. Now, the passive subject is the one who will render or who will do the obligation or the prestation itself. And he is called the passive subject, the debtor. Now, my question here is... What if there is a pandemic like this, no? like what we have last year? Now, of course, say for instance, uh, the debtor and the creditor entered into a contract. Say for instance, a uh, contract to sell a piece of property. Diba? A piece of property. Now, the delivery, for instance, of the piece of property is, say, for instance, when did we have the lockdown before? March, say, for instance, March 15, 2020, when the president ordered that there should be no movement, there is a lockdown because of the pandemic, etc., etc. For one reason or another, can the debtor now say that oh i was not able to comply with my obligation because there was an order coming from the president that there should be no movement during that time remember that this is the delivery date march 15 2020 and the debtor because of this order failed to comply with his obligation is that justified is that, only? Is that justified for not delivering on the specified date in the contract? Well, the answer is yes, it is justified for non complying, for, for not complying with the obligation because it is caused by what we call a force majeure or it's an unforeseen event. Unforeseen event. Okay, clear now? So if by reason of force majeure, the debtor was not able to comply with his obligation to deliver something, then that will justify his non-fulfillment of the obligation. But I think this is the only uh, reason, uh, justifiable reason, why a debtor may not be able to comply with his obligation. So what I will be just discussing are the basic things, no? Because obligations and contracts in the College of Law, 
will require you to study it for one semester. But for here, because uh, we are pressed with time, I, we could not delve deeper into the topic on obligations and contracts. Now, we proceed with contracts. No? Contracts. Contracts. What is a contract? Well, a contract is the meeting of minds. Is the meeting of minds by which one party, by which one binds himself, binds himself with respect to the other, binds himself with respect to the other, what? To deliver something, you know? To deliver something or to render service. No? To render service. So remember this. Obligations and contracts are closely intertwined. No? Because there will arise a, an obligation if there is a contract. Ba? So here is what is a contract? No, that is the question. What is a contract? It is the meeting of minds by which one binds himself with respect to the other to deliver something or to render service. We go back again to the prestations of obligations. What are those prestations again? The obligation to give, the obligation to do, or the obligation not to do. And then you go, to, give, to deliver something is the obligation to give. To render service is the obligation to do. And of course, that includes the obligation not to render service. Okay? For contracts, there are three requirements or essential requisites of a valid contract. So we have consent. These are the requisites of a valid contract. Consent, object certain, object certain, and of course, the cause. No? Very similar to the obligations. Consent, because there is a meeting of minds. No? There is the meeting of minds. No? In short, when do we say that there is a meeting of minds? Well, there is an offer coming from the one party and this offer has been accepted by the other party in such case there has been an offer and that offer was accepted communicated and accepted by the other party then consent the element of consent is complied with because there has been the meeting of minds no dapat i accept no just like when you are Entering into a contract, you just do not sign the contract, you have to read it. But once you have signed that, then you have bound yourself with all the stipulations and clauses stated in the contract. Okay, the me meeting of minds. Now, the object certain, of course, would be, what is this object that we call? Well, the one that you have to deliver, no? something it's the thing of value no thing of value that you ought to deliver to the other party and of course the cost would be the consideration stipulated in the contract consideration stipulated in the contract okay so these are the elements essential elements of a Contract. Okay. Can I move on, Mr. Jami? Kaya pa ba? Ang ating mutak? Or two? <laughs> two or one? Kaya pa? Okay. I hold you responsible. You have to read about obligations and contracts. Now, <clears throat> we are still here in contracts. No? What are the characteristics of contracts? No? Characteristics of contracts. 
now it is it has an obligatory force no obligatory force now i will explain this one by one later then autonomy autonomy then mutuality remember this uh, characteristics of contracts then the fourth would be relativity <coughs> okay we'll discuss this one by one obligatory force no <coughs> as i was saying earlier once you sign a contract then it can be enforced by any of the contracting parties no meaning once you sign the contract or once there has been a meeting of minds no what is that meeting of minds again well there has been an offer and that offer has been accepted by the other party once there is the meeting of minds you cannot say that well i do not want to commit myself with the contract anymore you cannot do that because you are obliged to comply with your obligation that's why you have to be very careful once that you have concurred in once you have accepted the offer or once you have signed the contract then you are bound as a contracting party okay is Johnny clear the second is what we call autonomy autonomy of the contract meaning to say that as a party as one of the contracting parties you could always frame the stipulations no? you could stipulate whatever you want to whatever clauses you would like to be included in and also the terms and conditions of the contract no you are free you are at liberty to state whatever stipulations clauses terms and conditions you would like to put into the contract you have that autonomy okay then we have mutuality mutuality of contracts well of course when we say mutuality the word mutual would mean that both parties both parties should be bound no should be bound it's not only one party because there is no no contract if that is the case Remember, it's the meeting of minds where, whereby one binds himself with respect to the other to comply with the obligation of the contract. Remember, both parties should be bound by the contract. And then finally, we have what we call relativity. What do we mean by relativity of contracts? Well, the word relative would mean you are bound you and you alone as well as your heirs and assigns no no other but you and you alone and your heirs and assigns relativity of contract would mean you entered into the contract so it is you who is liable including your heirs and assigns okay so that is the topic on obligations and contracts for you to know more about this topic i'd like you this is your assignment okay assignment number seven you now have a piece of paper there to show me assignment number seven i'd like you to watch a video lecture on obligations and contracts Okay, write it down so that you can see. I want you to uh, watch a video lecture on obligations and contracts by, so that is one, no? Uh, letter A, watch a video lecture on obligations and contracts by the dean. No? Basta, you just click obligations and contracts and the one discussing is the dean. Now, I'd like you to summarize this. Summarize what you have watched. That's letter A. No, I think this one is an 11-minute video lecture by the dean. 
And number two is you also have to watch the video lecture on contracts part one. Contracts part one. No, and this one is by attorney Javier. No, attorney Javier. Okay, the attorney Javier of the Philippine Law Lectures for Students. Philippine Law Lecture for Students. Okay, so I'd like you to watch two video lectures on obligations and contracts. The first is the obligations and contracts by the dean. You have to summarize that. And the second one is contracts, part one by attorney Javier which is coming from the Philippine Law Lecture for Students. You also have to summarize this. So there will be two summaries no, that I need for assignment number seven. Okay, I think that is all for today. Good afternoon, Ms. Johnny.